How's it going there everyone? It's Mr. Zen over here with a brand new Nanatsu no Taizai chapter discussion folks. After waiting a painful week guys, after waiting a painful week, we're finally bringing in Taizai chapter 185 into light folks and and people, people, you guys are going to really enjoy this chapter because folks, the freaking titan fight is actually almost finished. Yes folks. This chapter was done beautifully in essence. This chapter actually broke manga chapters in itself for this season here. I believe Escanar is going to be the king of new means for the new generations of anime viewers and manga readers because of the fact that Escanar in this fight, he brought down, he brought down a planet, <laughs> he brought down a planet onto the scene guys. But let's get to this chapter, folks. Yes, folks, the chapter still uh, leaves off back from the previous chapter well, e where Esterosa and Escanar are still squaring off. You know, and of course, you know, Esterosa and Escanar are clearly stating themselves saying, you know what? Let's get serious because the fact we can't waste any more time. And I'm here thinking like, OK, you know, they're going to they're gonna finally get serious. And no joke, guys, this chapter was very serious in itself, guys. Spot on, spot on, Nakaba, spot on. I give you props on this chapter. You give me wonderfully happiness every time I read your chapters, Nakaba. Ooh, ooh, yes. But folks, yes, as the chapter commenced, you see Escanor actually clearly say, you know, he's actually worried for himself because the fact that Escanor, his power is actually increasing throughout the chapter. So what he actually does throughout the whole entire chapter, he actually moves the fight towards another lake and I love the fact that Escanor's dialogue in this chapter is actually very like it actually changes too in, actually in the chapter as well it actually doesn't necessarily stay the same he's very uh, nice he's very nonchalant he's keeping his attitude very firm and, and strong in the, in the beginning of the chapter, but he, when he's even clearly speaking to Bond, it's not really a condescending attitude. When he talks to Estorosa, it's more condescending, but when he was talking to Bond, it's more of that, it's more of that, like, kind of friendly, uh, gesture, because he actually told Bond in the chat, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's so hilarious when he, when he talks to the other Seven Deadly Sins, because we don't really get a lot of his dialogue between the other Seven Deadly Sins, and when he talks to Bond, it's, very funny how he talks to him. He still treats him like, you know, like he's his equal. And that's what I actually loved about that chapter is he treated Bond as equal. But yeah, yeah, Bond, yeah, Bond is actually cursing back at Escanor, clearly stating like, yes, you, yes, you don't. Like, you know, he's just clearly like kind of cursing at him. Like, yes, you know, just get, get to it, man. Get, just get to it. Get to what you ever you have to do. And you're clearly loving the chapter because of the fact that because Escanor was clearly using his, he was actually maximizing his power, and basically, he's basically becoming the sun itself. He had the heat temperature was actually raising the surrounding area around all the other people. So, and they're actually all the humans actually couldn't, you know, they couldn't take that heat. Their the armor was actually melting on their skins. You know, it was very descriptive in that little little scene. It was only a couple panels, but still very descriptive. And I love the fact that the Kaba was actually describing and actually ten putting up the tension and. Uh, in the fight towards how how strong Escanor really is. And clearly from the beginning of this chapter, we're clearly seeing that Escanor, he really is, he brought, he's going to bring down the house on Estorosa, folks. He really is. Because then at the next scene, in a quick second, we actually get freaking Escanor punch. Or, I don't know what he did. Some kind of like hand gesture of some sort. I'm assuming... It was uh, it was actually an attack, it's like a physical attack stuff, but it was so fast that Esteroso could have seen that Escanor said, you know what, okay, let me take this fight somewhere else. So he actually basically pushed Esteroso away from the whole, the whole entire place that where they were at and said, you know what, let me take this somewhere else. And he actually clearly did. And from that scene itself, folks, that's where you clearly see es Escanor, he won the fight. He won the fight, folks. I am clearly stating that because of the fact that in that scene, once Estorosa kind of clearly saw that, that he, he was already sent somewhere else, that means that Estorosa was actually then, I would say he's actually, he's going by Escanor's pace. And by going at Escanor's pace, that means that he's actually following his lead. So that means Estorosa then, that's it, he was done. He was done from that scene on. Because from that scene on, the chapter then goes on to its climactic 
I would say of the arc itself that how it's going or the the start of the arc is very it's very going to a very point that it's very entertaining for us because from this point on we literally see how strong Escanar is at its full maximum against an actual enemy not in a flashback not in a future tense no 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 in the present tense folks because in this chapter we actually see a record breaking piece in the manga itself and it, and it's funny because in this scene Escanar actually takes up the sun, puts it in his hand. I'm sorry, he just put it in his hand. He actually rides the sun towards the place where he threw Estorosa and said, All right, since so by conventional means I can't attack you, so then let me let me attack you by some other maneuver. And he actually brings the sun down on Estorosa, and Estorosa is just like gargling underneath the lake pines because that's where uh, he as Kenos was kind of explaining to bonds like where, where can i take this character and like i said folks this chapter was was like it's leaving you on the edge of the sea because you're literally going to be reading this chapter over and over because i personally did uh, these past couple weeks i've been reading these chapters over and over because the fact that how nakab is portraying Eskarnar, he's portraying him very nicely and very entertaining in itself folks that it's you could read it over and over again and i'm not going to digress i'm sorry about that but yes folks once he takes Estrosa into the Lake Pines, he actually we actually see that the sun itself was actually a very it was actually a weapon, not only to Escanar but against actually like a phys like a, it's actually a physical a physical object that's actually hurtful towards Estorosa. And remember how back in the last chapter, Nakaba was very he was actually showcasing a lot of the sun itself, the heat. You know, like he showed a couple of panels on like that. This the sun is going to be a very important figure, and I clearly said it in the in the last uh, the last uh, I would say YouTube video that you know that this this the sun is clearly going to be very important in the next scene. I I'm clearly noticing that it is because manga artists when they sh they showcase a whole entire portrait, you know they they're clearly trying to emphasize something, and that sun itself, man, damn. Damn, folks, like, just damn, that sun itself, folks, that is sun is something to look out for. That sun is the hero of this manga, next to Escanar. Because the fact that without the sun, of course, Escanar can't actually use his full strength. And remember, folks, the Escanar really takes pride in the sun. So, man, you guys got to clearly, clearly read this chapter, folks. I am not lying to you. In the, then in the next couple of panels, we clearly see freaking Estorosa still alive by taking a hit of the sun. And you're clearly thinking, okay, whoa, 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 hold on. Estorosa, what is up with you? Come on, man. You should have at least died by that attack. And it's clearly, and they're actually showcasing Escanor's magic, not just physical offense, but actual magical offense as well. And remember, it says he, I'm assuming he actually can maybe do a physical copy of the sun or the actual sun itself. We're not too sure yet. They didn't really explain that much. But because of the fact that it, I'm going to say it's the actual sun in his palm towards Escanor, we actually then see Escanor have, I'm sorry, Estoros have a, a hard time fighting Escanor from that, from that point on. Because of the sun itself, you know, and that, that's and that at that point, guys, we actually then see Estorosa then start using little petty tricks, and like I said before, he's actually then fall taking Escanor's lead. He's actually following his lead, folks, and that's how, like I said, folks, that from there on, that's it. Estorosa lost because of the fact, as well, he actually was trying to block out the sun. It looked as if he kind of knew that the sun itself was actually giving him strength at the same time, but not really. Because when he was trying to block out the sun, he kind of saw that, okay, you know, without the sun, this guy this guy would kind of be partless. But no, folks, remember, you got to remember back at how Escanor gets his strength, guys. That's not how the, that's not how, es that's not Escanor's full entire strength. Escanor's strength keeps rising while it keeps, while the sun continues to rise as well. Like the sun, guys. And that's what I love the fact that this chapter they kind of emphasize that in, it, in itself because Nakabo's kind of explained that you know it's not Escanor's full strength, guys. Like I said, whoa. Like I said, Nakaba is pulling out all the stops in this chapter. It's not his full strength. And and they kind of showcase it in a little comical spoof scene. And I love the fact that little comic spoof because it's, it's kind of showcasing the the chapter in itself that you know there's no sun, but yet the sun is still like the sun's rays are still kind of showcasing. Which I kind of found hilarious. Which I, then it kind of goes back to me stating a little earlier in this episode because of the fact that is it a copy of the sun or the actual physical sun? So then I'm clearly stating now that it is. 
it is the sun because of that little scene that there's no sun, but the, the rays are out. So clearly, Escanaris has the power of the sun in his, the palm of his hands. And remember, I love how Nakaba's use of art style when he actually kind of creates a, a when he creates the characters and showcases them very tall, strong, lots of shadowing. And they did that in the next couple of, the couple of panels. And it shows Estrosa being, being fear. He was fearful. He was showing fear, folks. And we never seen that out of the Ten Commandments, especially Estrosa. Estrosa was actually showing anger. He was actually showcasing fear. He was, he was showing, you know, uh, what's it called? Anguish. Like, it's just, he was showing emotion. And like I said, that's how you know Estrosa was losing. And, I, and my God, guys, that's, that, that was the pinnacle. Because then I love the dialogue that freaking Escanar uses in the chapter. Because he clearly stated to Estorosa, just who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to control this fight? Like, it's like as if Escanar is saying that, that were, were you the one really in charge of, you know, winning this fight? Were you in charge of playing the field like Escanar was playing the, his cards right through, throughout the whole entire time no wonder he has the, that prideful sin because it's showcasing how like he's actually smarter than he looks too at the same time but does he get a little bit more knowledge as it goes on I'm not too sure but still clearly this chapter was emphasized the fact that in Escanar's case everybody's gonna love Escanar he's gonna be 20 the 2016 year of Escanar praise the sun folks praise the sun oh I'm crying, guys. I'm, I am actually crying. Oh, Escanar, you're so damn right cool. But guys, yes, in the in the episode, this actual chapter. I'm sorry about that. We actually then, actually then get to see right at the last pan couple of panels. We see the other Ten Commandments also show fear itself. And like I said, like in a, a little earlier, earlier, is the fact that we're actually witnessing a fear. And Zelderus, he he actually showed fear out of his. He called him brother. I must. I don't know why he called him. Maybe they. Maybe they are brothers. Maybe brother in arms. I don't think they're really actually biology, biological uh, siblings. But he called him brother, and he was actually shouting for him. And that's where Escanar dropped the sun and his. Well, I'm assuming it's his most strongest attack, or actually not. It's not even his strongest attack because it's. It's it, like if they said in the chapter. It's only about 30 more minutes until it actually reaches noon. So he, Escanar is still not at his strongest peak, guys. Holy snap! And he one sh like he just one shots. He one shots Estorosa and burns him to a crisp. And I love the fact that this chapter ended at that little scene. And that's how you clearly it was basically the Kaba say way of saying that's it, Estorosa, you lost. You lost Estorosa. Estorosa lost the battle. And I'm loving the fact that this chapter is also resembling. Uh, Cali's weather right now as well. Sorry guys, I live in Cali, but I love the fact that it's showcasing Cali's weather. The fact that it's very hot right now, and yet we're actually witnessing the freaking freaking Escanar's epic attack right here. So I'm loving the fact that it's going it's going with the uh, the wet the going with the weather itself. So that's how we're clearly gonna see some major epic scenes right there. And I can't wait until they until the studio that actually is is working. Or I believe it's if it's Netflix or I forgot what studio is working with it. I can't wait until they actually animate this series. And I can't wait for that because of the fact that Escanar is going to be the, the pride of the next seasons for Nanatsu no Taizai. He really is because of the fact that the way that Nakaba is portraying him in these manga chapters is just epic. And I just can't wait to see how they're actually going to showcase him in an animated format. And I can't wait how they, what character they're going to use. And I'm personally, personally... If they're going to use an English voice actor, I personally wish they would use Chris Sabat's English voice actor. Because if they use him, it would actually go with his prideful demeanor. It would actually go with that. And I'm loving the fact that if they go with that little that little scene, it would definitely fit the bill every time he fights. And, um, and I wish that if they actually use Chris Sabat for his English voice acting... They would use Lieutenant Armstrong's from Full Metal Alchemist. That actual voice from Chris Sabat's, that, that specific tone of voice. If they use that specific tone, that would be amazing if they animate this. Ooh, my God, it was so be so beautiful. I would I would literally buy money just to pay the studio and say, you know what, I start animating now, Chris Sabat. Wherever you are, Chris Sabat, 
go work on your voice and and start work and start reading and not to know ties that guys oh man uh but yes folks that's it for this chapter guys and also and my little my little Peter theory is the fact that at the end of this chapter we don't know who Escanor actually burned to a crisp it could be Zeldris itself because of the fact that he actually jumped jumped in there to try to save his brother so it could be Zeldris himself you know cuz you know the seventh i mean the the 10th commandments actually have to they actually have to still be alive in order to keep the story going. So it could be Zeldris, or it, or it could be both of them, but maybe one of them, Zeldris shielded him in order to, to, to like deploy the damage to like a bare minimum. But like I said, anything can happen in the next chapter, and I'm, and I'm kind of anticipating to see that the next chapter is going to be pure epicness. But that's it for this chapter, folks. What were you guys' expectations of this chapter? Was it to your expectations? Because personally, it was my to my expectations. Did you guys enjoy the chapter? Did you guys actually enjoy Escanor's prideful dialogue? Did you guys, or do you guys hope to see Chris Bot voice act as Escanor in the next upcoming season when they introduce Escanor in season two? Let me know down in the comments below, guys. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. This is Mr. Zen. Oh, and also, if you guys enjoy my content, don't forget to give a like, comment, share, and subscribe. But now, this is Mr. Zen. Signing out.